What's your sense in general? Is there something interesting you could say about your view on free speech? It seems like one of those terms that's also over, overused to mean a lot of different things. What does it mean to you? If you have a democratic style of governance, you are entrusting people with one of the most awesome and radical of responsibilities. And that's saying that you're going to pick the people that are gonna make some of the hardest decisions in all of human history. If you're gonna trust people to vote correctly, you have to be able to trust them to have open and honest dialogue with each other. Whether that's Nazis or KKK people or whoever talking, um, you have to believe that your people are going to be able to rise above and make the correct determinations when they hear these types of speeches. And if you're so worried that somebody's going to hear a certain political figure and they're going to be completely radicalized instantly, then what that tells me is that you don't have enough faith in humans for democracy to be a viable institution, which is fine. You can be anti-democratic, but you, I don't think you can be pro-democracy and anti-free speech within reason. So what's the within reason? So I mean, you're not, like, you can't post like child porn or something on Twitter where, where people try to get you on that stuff or like direct calls to violence are probably not. You shouldn't be tweeting out like, we're going to meet up tomorrow and go bomb, blah, blah, blah. Probably not. So do you think it's okay to allow racism and anti-Semitism and uh, hate speech? Hate speech, yes, because that's can be very broadly defined. Um, I can understand there being some basic rules of like no slurs on like a platform that gets into like acceptable forms of moderation or like excessive harassment and bullying, I can understand. Um, but past that, when, when the when the moderation becomes ideological, I get a little bit nervous because you know, for, for there's a whole other host. Yeah, of there's, uh, of course it's all a gray area, but when it feels like ideology has seeped into the censorship. Not good. Yeah which it's so fascinating to think, especially now that Elon bought Twitter, how do you engineer a system that prevents ideology from seeping in and nevertheless is able to uh, create a platform that has healthy conversations? Because mm -hmm. if you have one guy who's just screaming nonsense nonstop, it, it has this effect where the quiet voices at the back of the room are silenced. Yeah. So like, that that's what you usually don't talk about. Like if you let one annoying loud person in, that's actually censoring the voice of a lot of people that would like to speak, but they don't mm -hmm. get a chance. That's one of the things, especially around like trans discourse, I have to constantly do that like reminder for my audiences. So like when I'm dealing with these types of people on the internet, a lot of them might seem really crazy. A lot of these types of people might seem insane, but like in the real world, outside of like the crazy Twitter activist world, like the vast majority of people you're meeting from LGBT communities are like the coolest, normalest people. All they want is to like write to live their life in the way they want to and to be like unobstructed and like, yeah. But people will get this impression of like an online activist, like a vegan or LGBT person or whatever. And then they think that every single person in real life is like that. And it's a really negative stereotype.